aren't as relevant uh, or aren't as, uh, can't tell you as much as, as you might like. But where's this point hidden? It's way at the bottom of the slide. So lots of problems with that slide. And while some people would make the argument that you know, this is probably uh, engineers that are really tired, they work really hard, um, that, and then they've just not done a good slide. Edward Tufte would like you to believe that um, this is actually the fault of PowerPoint itself. The PowerPoint as a slide mech, as a, as a communication tool, promotes what he calls a cognitive style that is necessarily shallow, that inhibits the technical depth required in technical and engineering contexts. This is a pretty strong claim that he's making, right? It's basically saying, you know, don't use PowerPoint in technical situations. And it's very hard to get away from that in the type of communication that we're, we're uh, doing these days in engineering. So here's the basis of here's some of the basis of his argument. Right. If you guys have used PowerPoint before, and I imagine that you have, most of you, yes, and right. you will have to in this uh, design contest. So, something that you want to think about. This, for every top, is a problem. Right? It's that when you click into add a new slide in PowerPoint, that there's a, a structure that's laid out for you. The most frequent one that, that people don't um, adjust from is this bulleted list, right? This is a master slide that you get when you click new slide in PowerPoint. And in this slide, he says basically, well, <clears throat> it gives this heading uh, disproportionate power, right? Which he talked about in that initial analysis of the um, Columbia slide. This, it organizes things in default in these levels, even though in a lot of cases, these levels are used correctly or appropriately, or they may not even be appropriate to the situation in which you're trying to communicate. Um, <clears throat> he argues that the size of the screen and the way that you have to read that material limits information density, so it promotes a shallow communication of information. Um, and so he's arguing, essentially, that this cognitive style um, is not particularly conducive to good technical presentations. So, um, what do you think of this argument? <coughs> yeah. I think that it's a pretty weak argument given the circumstance. It's like the kind of thing that maybe you'd expect from a high school student or like someone in school, but when you're looking at like a professional engineering company at like doing something very important, but that's a pretty weak defense. Um, do you think that do you think that his argument is weak, or do you think that but, well, like his argument that like it's not a good layout. It might not be a good layout, but the fact that he's arguing that that is the main problem in that situation. Those people are professionals, they should know how to deal with something like Okay, so you would still argue that it was the fault of the engineers in the way that they communicated the information. Oh, they definitely could have found a way around right? this if they could find a way to like build rockets that go in space. Okay, <laughs> so that's, sure. Certainly, any other opinions about this, this particular very strong argument? Anybody, anybody agree with this at least? Yeah. So we, can you expand on that a little bit? Meaning, um, people don't know how to organize the information on PowerPoint. PowerPoint just needs to be as an attempt to be used to have ideas where it comes, but not follow it. Yes, absolutely. So the other school of argument would say, and, and the, the reason um, Tufty's analysis is really um, based on the fact that you know even if you're an expert in your field, and if you're not an expert, or you don't spend as much time on the communication part of your activity, you're going to fall prey to problems like this, which is things like 
um, uh, adhering to the kind of typical conventional styles that PowerPoint provides you. So certainly, um, the tools are there within PowerPoint to actually allow you to do much more than this. But the, the tendency in PowerPoint is to encourage you to do something that is a little too simple. Now, his hatred of our, uh, PowerPoint is uh, pretty well known and is kind of legendary now. So people have started making um, <coughs> wonderful uh, <laughs> infographics like this to kind of illustrate how much he hates it. Um, but I want to present very quickly. <laughs> and I think it speaks to your point that you just made there, which is the fact that we want to use the tool in an intelligent way, understanding the specific context that we're in, um, that we're making that communication in. So, as you can imagine, the response to this uh, particular argument was fairly strong as well. Um, in particular, um, a group called Communication Partners uh, presented a response to the claims that uh, uh, Edward Tufty was making. Uh, we should note that they are consultants for technical companies who focus on making PowerPoint presentations. So they, they have a little bit of invested in that as well. But they would argue, or, and you know, I think I would agree with them, or others would argue, that um, <clears throat> The fault lies in, not in PowerPoint, but in the users or engineers who are making that presentation. Um, because they adhere to the basic features of PowerPoint, that's kind of one of the elements. More importantly, um, they fail to respond to the specific need of the situation. So what kind of information do those people actually need uh, to make the decision about what to do about Columbia, what, what data they had to make that decision, they didn't make much uh, an, of an effort to do the interpretive uh, part for a non-technical audience, and they didn't think um, about the fact that it was a really highly time-sensitive situation. Now, keep in mind, for with that slide, that was also distributed to a bunch of people who weren't at the presentation. So, you know, people had to make sense of that slide without any commentary uh, response as well. And so, we think about uh, the issue of form uh, being really important for technical communication. And we often forget about what the specific needs of that situation are. And this is what um, uh, a revision of that slide would look at like. So, we'll come back to this slide and we'll think about ways to, um, well, we'll go through a few ways to kind of uh, we revised this slide to make it more workable and, and have it be a functional slide for this uh, particular purpose, right? So I would look at that and, and, and say, okay, look, there are at least three sources of data there. Okay? You have the uh, existing SOFI on tile test data. You have the uh, data from this particular flight mission that happened a little while ago. And then you have information from that particular model. That's a much better way of organizing this information than in a bullet list. Right? So the revision that was uh, suggested for this slide was um, something that looked very much like this. So take a minute to kind of um, digest the slide and we can talk about it a little bit. That is largely the same information that was on the previous one. What do you guys think of this? It's a lot easier to read. And what sorts of things make it easier to read? Actually, look at the top, right? It's a clear title. So there's a lot of um, 
things that you can do with PowerPoint, even with all of that information. Now, this is still a really text-heavy slide. It's a lot of reading here, right? But like you said, if you don't have a lot of time and you want to see uh, the main point that's supposed to be um, taken from this slide, you can find this relatively easily. So, we have uh, a couple of things. A title that states that the, con the conclusion that should be drawn from the slide. Um, we have those three sources of data that are clearly identified, explained, differentiated. Um, we have results of each of these slides. Uh, even if they're not uh, relevant, noted. Um, and notice that they're still like acceptable level and potential for dangerous, but it's it's better than significant, right? Acceptable is more clear than uh, significant. Potential for dangerous, again, more clear than significant. Um, and again, we have the conclusions, we have the interpretation of the data, we have the information that's required to make a uh, decision that's provided, and finally, we have a set of recommendations right? that acknowledges the problems with the method and provides it an alternative to get the data that it needed to make a more informed decision, because that was ultimately the point that came out of that slide. So one thing I want to point out to you very quickly about this rearrangement of, um, of that slide visual is if you look very carefully, we see method, results, discussion, recommendations, or conclusion. Structure look similar, like look familiar to you? Right. Um, follows the scientific method in the presentation of data. Right. And so it fits into the context in which they're working. Does it scramble or throw up um, a whole bunch of bullet points in very strange levels? Uh, instead, here we've got the presentation of the data in a very scientific way because it's a scientific setting and it works particularly well that way. So, um, my closing message for you then is as you're planning your uh, presentation um, and as you're thinking about your visuals as well, even in your uh, uh, in your paper or um, in your posters is that you should really start with something that's uh, instead of a kind of a set template start with emptiness okay? start with something that's blank um, and start by asking yourself what is it that this slide actually needs to accomplish first okay? um, if it's to visualize your complete design, you're going to want a different level of detail than if it was to visualize specific parts of your design, right? Um, if it's going to be explaining how your design works, uh, how your design works, um, it's going to be slightly different than if you're trying to justify exactly how that component of the design or the whole design meets your requirements. Um, and of course, you know, if you're going to give an overview of the presentation, that might just be text slides, but that's not going to be a good format for the rest of the things that you're trying to do in your presentation. So the first step, then, is to establish the signal that the, the visual is trying to accomplish. Um, then you can start to look at uh, templates, if you want, but again, you know, that's if any, right? If you want to use those templates that are there, but you, know, you could probably start with just a blank uh, slate. And then you want to think about how to best design layouts and visuals to communicate this signal uh, in this situation. Okay? So the, the principles, again, um, to focus on in design the visuals for technical presentations, figure out what your signal is. Uh, and then figure out how to maximize that signal from that slide or from that visual uh, and minimize the noise um, that might come into that particular signal um, in the design of your slide. Now, um, that was my main message, but I want to just look at one more thing quickly before I let you go for lunch. I know we we're a little late already. So, um, just in, in, in your opinion, I'm curious, uh, whether you think this is a better slide or that's a better slide. So 
I'm just going to flip back. It's the same information, same organization, just slightly different. Okay, so let's have a vote for this one. Okay, let's have a vote for the other one. Well, it's about it's about even. <laughs> um, so why this one? For the people who like this one better. Okay, so there's there's the contrast level, sure. Yep. Thank you. 